<laughs> Jack of all trades. Pastor Matthews, to his beloved staff, those of you who work so committedly with him, we thank God for you. To all of you in your respective places, I don't want to get to call them names because most of you all, like you said, I don't know anyway. <laughs> Amen. But we are glad to be here with you today. Amen. Amen. I want you to look to your neighbor and tell your neighbor, it's so, I'm so glad <laughs> to share homecoming with you. people with us, not only is my mom here, but my dad is here, my, my aunts are here, my friends are here, my partners are here, my Phyllis is here, my Sherry is here, I think uh, Ms. Tillman is out there somewhere, there's a whole bunch of you here, you can stand very quickly for those of you who came with us.
class all by himself because John was sort of radical in his belief. He wanted his readers to believe that Jesus was not just Elijah or a product of Abraham, but that he was God, Emmanuel, in the flesh. When you look at Jesus, you're looking at God. As a matter of fact, John opens up his word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was God. The word was with God, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Somebody said Jesus. Jesus. So now that we have clearly defined, John wants his readers to understand and to believe. He that come to God must first believe that he is. So many Christians, so many people, so many saints, so many churchgoers, so many people who have been in church for 10 years, 15 years, 30 years, do not clearly understand who they're worshiping. So John wanted his readers to understand that when you look at Jesus, you look at God. That God was so awesome, he was so big, he was so bad, he was so terrible that not only was he Jehovah God, but that he was able to drop himself in the belly of a virgin, come out in the flesh named Jesus, and ascend into heaven and steal the Holy Ghost. God, one person, but three dimensions. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. So in other words, it's nothing scary about spirituality. It's nothing scary about Jesus. It's nothing scary about God. Jesus was there from the very beginning. When we look at Genesis, and we know that the Spirit moved upon the face of the earth, Jesus was there. When we look at the book of Psalms, that book of poetry, that book of hymns, we understand that even Jesus in the New Testament, he sung the song. So he's all up in it. Now, I'm not Jesus only. We have to understand who Jesus really is. The Bible says that John was the son of Zacharias and Elizabeth, Mary's cousin. He was sent from God, and he was not the light, but he was one who came to bear the light. He was one, the Bible says that he said that, I am the voice of the one crying in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, and said, also said the prophet Isaiah in 40 and 3. In other words, his theme was to, for us to believe. He wanted his readers to believe. But these are written that he might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. And in believing, you might have life through his name. John 20, 31. So John was John the Baptist. He was also known as John the Beloved. He's known to be the one who wrote the book of St. John. He also wrote the first, second, and third epistles of John and the book of Revelation. He was known as the forerunner of Christ. In other words, John had a purpose. He was on fire for God because he knew who God was. The Bible even tells us that he had the opportunity of being able to lay his head upon God's breast. So here we are immediately going into the text and Jesus was such a master teacher, he always took opportunities and provided teachings to his disciples. How many of us know that you are disciples? And in order for me to go out and tell it like God tells it, I have to know exactly what God is saying. So Jesus takes the opportunity to teach us and he's using his agricultural setting, letting his disciples know I the vine, and ye are the branches. If you abide in me, you shall bear much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. What does that mean? It means that I cannot be independent of God. It means I might be anointed. I might know how to preach. I might have been to seminary. I might have looked at YouTube. I might even know how to shout and speak in tongues and we can learn that at home. But you must This is 
over. This is not superficial, like superficiality. This is coming home so that I might be able to go and bring somebody else home. This is about evangelism. This is about ministry. This is about each one reaching one. So John had his finger on the pulse of the movement. He knew exactly what Jesus was coming before he even came. He says, he, there's one, I'm coming and I'm not baptizing you with water, but there shall be one that will come after me that shall baptize you with the Spirit and with fire. So in other words, we have to understand that even our friendships, our relationships, our coming home, our families, that we cannot do all of this without having the fire. Without having the fire. Yeah. What does family mean? Family means descendants of a common ancestor. What does friendship mean? No, to be a friend, a person whom one knows, with whom one has a bond of mutual affection. So that's very, very easy. You know, many of us, you know, you can look at my dad and, and tell that that is my father. Same nose, same head, same legs. You can tell that that's my dad. Okay, so that's very, very easy. Okay, you can tell that many of us are friends. I like red, you like red. That's easy friendship. Okay, but now God is taking us into a deeper depth with him to apply fire to that element. The element of fire is come. So because the, the element of fire is a combining element. See, we can have a whole lot of friends and still not be hooked up spiritually. I can have sisters and brothers, blood relatives, aunts and uncles, even a mom and dad, but if I'm not hooked up with them spiritually, then we really don't know one another. It takes fire. How many of us cook? Most, most of our recipes now calls for heat. The reason why our recipes calls for heat is because there's a joining. Come on now, I know y'all are hungry, so come with me. If you come with me, then I'll shut up. When you apply heat, heat causes things to mesh together with it. So many of us are having church, but without the heat. <laughs> Singing in the choir, and we have beautiful, wonderful, dynamic choir members, musicians, but without heat. <laughs> Preachers, preaching, they preach you up underneath the bench. Oh, <laughs> 
heal. He comes to kill. And if he's not satisfied, he comes to destroy. But Jesus says, I come to put the dog back in his place. Come and put the next place for me at home. Now, every, every relationship, every relationship has ground rules. If you don't have ground rules in your relationship, then you'll have chaos. Now, John told us so clearly that if you love, if you love him, that you'll keep his commandments. If a man loves me, he will keep my words, and my father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode. Somebody say home. home. With, him. With him. So in other words, some of the reasons why we come in empty and leave out empty is because we forgot to invite Jesus. Just like today, many of you will go home after the cooking, after the cook-off, after the desserts, and I might, you know, you pastor, if you lose, I'm still going to have some of that dessert. <laughs>
you should be my brother or my sister 365, 24-7.
that means that tomorrow when you meet me, I should be the same person that you met. Tell somebody that's a hard job. That's a hard job. <laughs> Next year when you meet me around this time, I shouldn't be worse. I should be either the same or better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I want to be with you. It doesn't matter what what's going on. We all have our issues. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Bible says God delivers us out of them all. The reason why I'm not experiencing the joy of salvation, the reason why I'm not experiencing the fullness of joy, and we quote scriptures, we do church, you know, because in the presence of God there is fullness of joy. But ain't nobody full. I know Pastor Matthews can preach, but the real
Spirit. And they that worship Him, this is my closing thought, Pastor. I think I did pretty good. My closing thought. God is a Spirit. And they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Ladies and gentlemen, we cannot worship God unless you worship Him in spirit. I cannot worship Him. I can, you know, give me some music, some dance music. I love to dance.
because I didn't do it the way you wanted, you didn't do it the way I wanted. <laughs> so in order to get into heaven, you gotta love me. Yeah. And you cannot pretend. Pray for your pastor. Pray for these ministers. Pray for these staff. I had a chance to be one of a group this morning. 14 people standing around the table. And I just, I could have just cried just then because I'm thinking, this is where it all begins. People coming together to make sure that the people of God are accommodated properly. Everything that they were discussing was about you. Making sure that you were okay. That's what Jesus did. He wasn't concerned about the cross. He knew that that was the way he had to go. He was not concerned about the pain. And ladies and gentlemen, those pictures that you have in your house, that is not the extent of the pain that Christ endured. He was a sloppy, bloody, shredded up mess. They didn't nail him in his hands. They nailed him in his wrists. They put the nail in his bone because that was the only way that the people would be able to hold up on the wood. But the Bible said he didn't stay there. But he ran. 